This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicke and as always, you better believe it, I'm here with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. I don't believe it. Yeah, well, I don't, I won't. Well, you better. No. I, I can't believe we're on Do Go On. I can't believe it. We've been trying for years. Feels good to be here. Yeah. And all it takes is 7,000 emails. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us, Dave. Hey, thanks so much for coming along. Great to have you here. Uh, now you're here, do you have anything to share or? No. Nah. Not really, no. No. That's, uh... no, I just wanted to come and listen. Yeah, so... F- just listen. Oh, so you just wanted tickets to a, a live show? Yeah, I just wanted front front seat tickets. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to sit here quietly. It's to the Warnicky gun show. It's been a horrible uh, mix-up because <laughs> I really prepared a lot of uh, back-and-forth moments. Oh, no, I, I don't feel comfortable participating in those. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, my God, is this a microphone? Oh, <laughs> You know John, who does the Dugo automations. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I saw he posted an old one recently, and I watched it. And at the end, it's it says, or in the description or something, it says, "Dugo on is Dave Warnicky's <laughs> podcast." Incredible. <laughs> Just no reference. Incredible. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That's okay. Um, Mr. Heggy sent us a, a bunch of uh, stickers and posters and all sorts of fun stuff, and he addressed it to Matt, Jess, and the rest. Oh, so... I love that. I love that a lot. Heggy, you dog! <laughs> <laughs> he knew you'd love that. That is good stuff. And the rest. <laughs> I, I had funny. some drinks with a few listeners the other night. They came to a comedy show I was on at Comedy Republic, mm. and then we had some beers afterwards, and I'm still feeling a little shit. <laughs> about it. Uh, hopefully uh, they were all, uh, <laughs> hopefully I didn't say anything Fuck. You didn't embarrass yeah. our good names? Yeah, really. I don't think I did. Did you slander me? I don't think I did. Well. Won't guarantee it. It doesn't fill me with confidence that he didn't <laughs> slander me. The, the night ended in you yelling over and over again, shut you toilet. Shut <laughs> you toilet. <laughs> the last time I, you and I got very drunk with some listeners in Perth. <laughs> I really embarrassed myself. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying. Siraj, who you guys know, yes, he's the king amongst men. He was. He's bad news though. He's like yeah. normally I'm the I'm the guy who's creating trouble. Yeah, I know. But no, Siraj uh, usurped that role for me. <laughs> and I was like Dan and Theodore as well. Dan, a Saint supporter, big fan of Dan. Uh, like because of the did. Saints thing, mainly yes. Yes, right, okay. fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Theodore knows what he did. <laughs> Oh, you mentioned two people. Big fan That's of Dan. Great. That's great. Yeah, love Dan. <laughs> anyway. Uh... <laughs> Theodore, also very good. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. We believe that. Yeah, yeah. We oh my God. <laughs> yeah Theodore. Yeah, Theodore sounds great. No, I've never met a shit Theodore, to be, <laughs> to be honest. Never. I know. I, I'm just stoked that I can remember their names. Yeah, that is pretty good. Assuming that I did actually the meet those people that night. Yeah. yeah. There's also someone called Chris there going, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, come on. Me. It was a fever dream, and uh, but it was so realistic. <laughs> All right. Well, Jess, yes. you get front row uh, tickets today. And to the gun show? It, and in exchange, you have to explain how this show works. Oh, this wasn't part of the deal of the 7,000 emails. I warm up the okay. guns. Okay. Now we're talking. We've still got some of these jingles up our sleeves. I've got to, I've got to cue them up for our next recording. Yeah, absolutely. But for now, I'll do it. Um, so one of us goes away to our separate homes. and <laughs> That's very important. We live separately. We do people, live some separately. people think we live in a, a, a mansion together. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, that's the dream. That's the plan. Um... Uh, so one of us goes away to our separate homes where we write up a report about a topic, usually suggested by a listener. The other two don't know what the topic is, and we always get on to the topic with a question. Thank you so much. And it is my turn to report on something you don't know what I'm going to talk about. And here's the question. What once controversial instrument has been called the Devil's Horn and was banned by the Vatican, Hitler and Stalin? The Devil's Horn. The Devil's Horn. Instrument as in a musical instrument? Musical instrument. Bagpipes. Oh, <laughs> they're quite devilish. They yeah. get into your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing it's, it's like it's sort of, it must be red and phallic shaped <laughs> is what I'm assuming. Yeah. What's red and phallic shaped? Well, apart from the Devil's Horn. Um, <laughs> 
It's a good question. Is it like a? Is it? Is it the a type of horn? Is it a brass? Uh, is it a woodwind? Yes, it is a woodwind. It's a woodwind. Okay. Uh, that's I know the that that is a category of instrument. I don't but know if I can name that many. Is it a clarinet? It's better in the works. No, it's oh, not a clarinet fuck. because it is also saxophone. made of brass. It is the saxophone. Yeah. Damn it! I feel like I did a lot of the work to get there. Exactly. It's a team game and Matt won. And I know <laughs> uh, about the reeds and it's woodwind and that sort of stuff, of course, because of Lisa Simpson. I didn't know it was a woodwind. I think only because the reed makes right. it a woodwind. Is That's that right? right, yes. And uh, Homer had to go get a reed. Yeah. And, and he wrote it on his shoe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got there too late. He walked in on her. Uh, she'd already cracked it. Oh, sad. Cracked the reed. She Back was when the me. Simpsons had heart. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so, understand. So this is a report about, about saxophone? This is the weird history of the saxophone. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, suggested by a few people. Uh, sp- really? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes they're wrong and sometimes they're very right. Most of these people wanted me to focus on just the inventor of the saxophone. Oh, okay. Greg Saxophone. Uh, Greggy Sax. And, uh, but I've taken it a step further and just gone the full history of the sax because it is a weird and wonderful journey. But thank you but to... But nobody asked you to go the step further. No, I mean... Okay, no, just clarifying. I leave no stone unturned. That's true. Uh, this has been suggested by Drew Morgan, Ethan Irwin, Kendra Mickles, Orla McGrath, Joe Martz, and Jay Menangi. Okay. okay. I'm guessing this must be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but so far... It I'm... just doesn't sound like it will be. Yeah. <laughs> well... Or Wilbur. Wilbur Wilde. Wilbur Wilde. saxophone yes. player. Fuck Great yeah. work. Very famous. <laughs> Incredibly internationally famous. <laughs> I mean, it's silly that you even said saxophone. Everyone's yeah. like, yeah, well, yeah, Nadar, yeah. We, we know, know who Wilbur, Wilbur is. Yeah. We, we, yeah, why do you even say wild? We know who Wilbur, Wilbur is. <laughs> How many Wilbers do you know? Wilbur. Uh, the saxophone is one of f- few widely used modern instruments that was invented by a single person. Okay. And it all started... wasn't married. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Other instruments? He actually oh, wasn't married. That is weird. So normally it's a team of scientists who come up with <laughs> Well, they just de- develop over time. Right. And, and you know, uh, they, they change yes. people with this guy. Okay. So hang on. He perfected the saxophone first go. Nobody's done anything to it. It has changed slightly, actually. Okay. So but that lied. is First inter- sentence, he lied. Oh, straight away. <laughs> It is, that is interesting because normally a guy invents an instrument or something in his basement yeah. and it is just some wacky oh bullshit. God. Yeah, it's a bunch of bottles stuck together. <laughs> yeah. With a few like Christmas lights stuck <laughs> to them. Oh, like, that'll do. Yeah. I watched like a 15-minute old BBC, not 15-minute old, 15-minute <laughs> wow, I mean, long. You, and you were here like, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> you, watch, you skipping out on us? <laughs> what the, are you doing in that, John? <laughs> watching BBC docos. I think it was from the 80s. <laughs> And Which was, pawn like a normal boy? Yeah, come boy. on. Jeez. <laughs> Gee, learning on the job, weirdo. Sorry, sorry. It was like a it was like a guitar sort of, only it was like it was electric. And it did look kind of cool. And it sounded silly, but like it was like eighties. Yeah. Is this the first time you've seen like an electric, an electric guitar? guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find. I can't. Even, to be honest, I was trying to uh, describe it. And I can't remember what the instrument was at all. Yeah. But. It, it was electronic. On, on, cause, <laughs> but you're absolutely right that lots of people have in, since invented instruments. They never take off. No. But this guy invented something and it <laughs> it's really taken off. Normally it's like a cultural invented over... Yes. Yeah, over generations. Now I understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> the saxophone's huge. They're big. They're big, baby. In the 80s, every rock song had a solo. And also this weird, like, electric guitar. I'd never seen <laughs> one before. <laughs> All right, and it all starts with a wacky Belgian inventor, Adolf Sax. <laughs> yes! <laughs> what a guy. Was born in 1814 in what is now modern-day Belgium. His father, Charles Joseph Sax, was initially a carpenter, but then became a master maker of wind and brass instruments, as well as pianos, harps, and guitars. Non-electric. Come Sorry. on down okay. to CJ Sax <laughs> for all your musical needs. House of Music. Oh. Uh, he even became Belgium's chief instrument maker for William I of Orange. So making instruments is in Adolf Sax's blood. The young Adolf played the flute and the clarinet and made his own modifications and in instruments from a young age. From 14 or 15, he was in his father's workshop improving instrument designs. And according to one of our favourite websites, allthatsinteresting.com, quote, a young Sax even hewed a clarinet and two flutes from ivory, a feat 
once considered impossible. Wow. And so, that's when he was young. Yeah. When he's a teen, he's doing stuff that people are like, you can't do that. Is his dad loving it or hating it? Yeah. Yeah, him already being better than him. <laughs> Stay the hell out of my workshop. Get, I, was, I was about to do that for the first time ever as well. Yeah. Stop jumping Stop ahead. Stop copying Stop me. Stop copying me in the future, in the past. <laughs> Uh, the young sax presented some of his new designs to the Belgian exhibition, which is a big deal. And despite their quality, he was not given first prize due to his age. The panel said if he achieved the pinnacle of success at his age, he'd have nothing left to strive <laughs> oh for. Oh, my God. That's so weird. That's so weird. What a weird competition. We don't give it to the best. We, we give, give it to who needs we a give, win. We <laughs> give, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. It's <laughs> that guy with a bunch of bottles stuck <laughs> together like, good job, Congrats. Darren. <laughs> <laughs> you win again. Or they just... <laughs> He, just, he needs this. Adolf, just give it to him. Honestly, he yeah, you will reach new peaks. He will not. <laughs> Darren is done. He hasn't even reached puberty. <laughs> He's 42. The participation award has become first place. <laughs> yeah. That's so strange. Or they just give it to the oldest person that yeah. entered. Yeah. Look, He's, he's likely to die. He's eight. <laughs> I'm pretty sure when I was at um, Sin, the, the youth network, mm. uh, I was about to age out, and I, I got a lot of roles that year, and I'm pretty sure they were, like, looking at the old man. He's nearly 25. Give him oh a go. God. Give him a go. He's right. close to death. Yeah. They did call it a sin death. Yeah. 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 When you're 25 or 26, it's okay. It's all over. Your life's over then. Yeah. And the, the, well, the station ends up being just a radio session of 25 and 26 year olds because that's the only people they're given give them a go <laughs> they need this they need this you're 17 who cares about you you've got a future <laughs> yeah. look at this guy look at him so uh, Adolf Sachs he actually rejected the prize so they gave him like a, a lesser prize saying if they think me too young to deserve the gold medal I myself think me too old to accept this Vermeil one Vermeil being a type of medal where it's silver but just plated in gold so not real gold Okay. okay. He's not taking that gold-plated shit. But that wasn't the only thing that was notable about his childhood, his amazing success. Adolf was highly accident-prone, and his survival was somewhat of a miracle. Oh, wow. So Okay, so accident-prone is one thing, but then being surprised that he lived is like, oh, I don't think he's accident-prone. I think he's got some bad luck or something. Oh, well, let me give you this list of mishaps and accidents that are commonly listed as befalling the young sax. Oh, my God. At the age of three, this is where it all starts, he fell down three flights of stairs. How? <laughs> There's usually like a little turn. How he, did he fall down the turn? He, tuck- he got up. <laughs> <laughs> took a step. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, more stairs. Not again. <laughs> uh, he- oh, well. <laughs> Couldn't happen three times. Yeah, glad I survived those two sets of stairs. Now I'll just take a step over here. Oh, I'm distracted. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> Uh, f- thankfully, uh, his head was stopped by a stone floor on the bottom. So finally, oh. Oh. You know, the stairs stopped and so did he. He was quite injured, possibly put into a coma, three years old. Uh, he survived, though. He then accidentally swallowed a large needle, which amazingly he was able to pass, a.k.a. shit oh. out he without any internal damage. He that shat a needle. He must have had to have kept it pointing down the whole yep. way. Wow, well that, done. That's dedication. Or up, probably. That would have been the safest yeah. way to pass it. <laughs> he shat a, a needle. A large needle. Yeah. I, you know, I've, after a few big nights, it's felt like... <laughs> 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 oh, no, I think I swallowed a needle last <laughs> night. <laughs> uh, in fact, he loved to accidentally swallow weird shit. Another time he reached for a glass of what he thought was delicious milk. But only once he swallowed it did he realise it certainly wasn't milk. It was diluted sulfuric acid. (laughs) How much did he drink before he realised? Because I think I'm pretty sure sulfuric acid has a pretty distinctive non-milky taste. Non-milky, yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know that for sure. I've never made that mistake. Well, can you take the blind... As I sip on a milk right now. (laughs) Oh, do I? (laughs) (laughs) Well, take take the blind Pepsi challenge. (laughs) One's a milk and one diluted sulfuric acid. It's diluted, though, so yeah. you know. Diluted with, with milk. milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's anyone could make this mistake. But he survived. He then accidentally drank a mixture of white lead, copper oxide, and oh, arsenic. No. He Fuck just wants to out. drink anything that's white. 
Tr- that's, yeah, that could get him in trouble for sure. And has, twice mm, yeah. so far. And the needle, so three times. It was a white needle. Oh, okay. It's yep. the name of a cool cocktail now. <laughs> <laughs> the white needle. Uh, he once fell onto a hot stove and severely burnt his side. How do you fall onto a stove? What? Why are you on the bench? What? Uh, get off the bench! Well, this is, is during this a, hu- is this is a human boy. Human boy. This is during a time <laughs> where, like, a cat or something. <laughs> this is like, where, you know, this is a time where it's like a, bo- you know, a, a boiler on fire. I still don't fully understand you know, how like, you fall. Oh, on a boiler stove. on fire! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah that's a thing you might fall on. <laughs> no, that does not, make not sense. a gas cooktop, but like more like a hot metal thing. He's fallen onto it. He avoided uh, infection from the burns, which was likely to kill people in those days. But he was scarred for life. Right. Far out. Mentally. Yeah. He never went near a stove again. He had cold meals the rest of his life. Yeah. Sandwiches three times a day. It's not a bad way to live. Cold meats. Uh, He once (laughs) fell from a three-story window. What the fuck? (laughs) No. What do you mean? Was this just because? Oh, because he didn't want to take the stairs anymore. He's scared (laughs) of stairs. And that was three flights of stairs. And now he's like, I'll just take my chances. Jump out a window. Uh, he fell in, this is a separate incident, he fell into a river and was discovered floating face down by a villager who pulled him from the water. Amazingly, he survived. Okay, the face down thing sounds bad. Yeah, that, that sounds sound real bad. As a kid, that'd be, you'd call that the dead man's float. And that uh, is because I think that's what a dead man looks yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. They, I think they expected to was pull. Was he doing that on purpose? He's going, ah, just uh, going for a quick dead man's float. <laughs> oh, down the river? Thing. I'll prank a villager. Back to childhood. What a weird thing for us kids to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I mean, you guys would have had fun like that. I'm thinking of an adult I know very well who still does it yeah. in public pools every time <laughs> he's on a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you reckon I can convince the uh, lifeguard that I'm dead? I'm like, please stop doing it. There are children around. <laughs> please stop pretending you're dead. Hey, kids, want to see a dead body? Into the water. <laughs> it's this one. <laughs> uh, but I'm not done yet. He was uh, involved in a gunpowder explosion at his father's workshop. Probably his dad trying to get him out of the way after yeah. he, uh, you know, a bit of an upstart. Uh, it was powerful enough to blow him across the room. He was again burnt, but he survived. Oh my god! Okay, so he's been exploded. <laughs> I think I w- that was the last one to tick off, really, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. He's really done it all. That one was d- after he d- accidentally drank some white explosives. <laughs> yeah. Now we just need um, frostbite. And then and fell then, on a stove. And then we've got the whole bingo card. Oh, frostbite. He has well, an extreme be... cold. Here we go. Finally. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, be so I don't want to disappoint. One day whilst just walking along, he was hit in the head by a slate tile that fell from a roof what and the... knocked him unconscious. What the fuck? How unlucky is this guy? This kid's not supposed Very to unlucky. live. Uh, well, his mother was traumatised by these accidents and openly said, he's a child condemned to misfortune. He won't live. <laughs> oh, my God. Mum. His nickname in the town came to be Little Sax the Ghost. Oh, <laughs> fuck. That is grim. I thought he was going to die. This kid is going to die any day now. And should we do anything about it? Nah. Nah. nah what does his nickname him? Could Give wrap him nickname. in cotton wool. Nobody get too close to him so that you don't have to mourn his death <laughs> inevitably soon. Yeah, that's that's pretty grim. And but I mean that was kids back then you would you wish him would die, right? Every child was called the ghost. Yeah, what what era is this? Seventeen hundreds. Seventeen hundreds, oh yeah, my god, yeah. Right, yeah. Kids. <laughs> kids these days. G- good luck. Kids those days. Eighteen hundreds, sorry, you were right. You were listening. There's a good little test there. <laughs> and this kid's name's Adolf. Adolf Sam. One of the last yeah, last generations of kids to be acceptably called Adolf. Mm. I right. can't wait to find out why it that Hitler and stuff banned the sax. Oh, well, we will get to it. It, make, it makes no sense. Makes no sense. Makes no sax. Well, to make it, to get a that sax. It work, did it? <laughs> I tried. He gets no sax. There we go. Uh, somehow he survived all these trials and tribulations, and although he bore the scars for the rest of his life, perhaps these battle scars would prepare him for the battles he would fight later in life. Okay. Okay. Okay, a little sizzle there. Yeah, I was wondering if... Yeah, something like when he fell down the stairs, did he fall into a tube that had a like a it got thicker as the tube went down, and then it had a little upturn at the end, and that saved him from hurting himself. Well, like he hit his head, and then he just started speaking like this. Hang on, I like this. <laughs> oh my god. This- <laughs> 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 well, this kid's got a fever. <laughs> <laughs> and his mum's like, he won't live. He won't live. <laughs> 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 he never spoke again. 
but I dig this sound. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so he studied at the Royal Conservatory of Brussels and continued to build his own instruments throughout uh, his uh, formative years, getting a patent at 24 for his improvement to the bass clarinet. Okay. Uh, before it, this, it had been reportedly unreliable and sounded like shit, but he managed to keep the thing in tune. So he made a big change. Right. Oh, maybe did he fall one day while carrying a clarinet, <laughs> <laughs> making a kink in the clarinet, making it sort of like a big upturn at the bottom? Yeah. Like is it going to be something like this? I really hope it is. <laughs> That his accidents finally pay off. Well, the new and improved instrument was popularly received, and Sax was already making a name for himself in capital cities across Europe. He continued entering the competition where he was refused first prize at a young age, and in 1841 demonstrated an early prototype that would become known later as the saxophone. It featured a mouthpiece like a clarinet, and was the first wholly new instrument of its kind to emerge since the clarinet itself had been invented 100 years earlier. Right. It was a game changer, but according to Michael Siegel in his book, The Devil's Horn, the story of the saxophone from noisy novelty to king of cool. Yes. <laughs> you better believe I uh, read a lot of this book. Oh, that sounds like a great book. According to Michael Siegel's book, which is great, uh, and there's a link in the description if you want to check it out on Google, a fellow competitor saw sax's invention and in a fit of rage kicked it and damaged it so much it could no longer be played. Right, and put a bend in it at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Fed up with this mistreatment, so at the moment it doesn't have a bend, it's just stri- straight up and down like a clarinet. Sax left Brussels, went to Paris, which at the time was the musical instrument producing capital. He's like, well, if I'm not going to get the respect here, I'm going to go get some respect in the big, big city. Huh. And you're wondering, what is this guy really like? Well, let's get Devil's Horn author Michael Siegel to paint us a little picture of this inventor. Oh, thank you, Michael Siegel. Thank you, Michael. Take it away. (laughs) Quote, brash, arrogant, handsome, (laughs) with a lush, full beard and bedroom eyes. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, well, yeah. Um, My ears are burning. familiar. (laughs) Adolf Sachs was the embodiment of the fiery 19th century romantic. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know about you. Tick, tick, tick. He's not the only one with the Devil's Horn right now. Hands Dave, w- are you saying you're horny for... <laughs> for I'm at full beard and bedroom eyes. I mean, come on. For our new listeners, Dave, Dave is describing uh, me. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Thank you. If I, am I not human? Have you pricked me? Do I not bleed? <laughs> the devil's prick. <laughs> Do I not bleed? <laughs> I've got the devil's prick right now. <laughs> Stay away from me. <laughs> so that's just a little image of this guy. He's a, he's a hot young thing. Yeah. But he's, he's also arrogant. Paris. Yeah, brash. Isn't it funny? Someone who's had his childhood to still be arrogant. That's yeah. imagine how arrogant he would have been if he never fell down three flights of stairs, <laughs> or had a, walked out a, a window, tile hit him. <laughs> fell onto a stove. That was God's way of trying to knock him down a few pegs. All right, mate. Yeah, yeah imagine the ego on him if he hadn't had all that happen. <laughs> well, he was a confident guy, despite the why. Accident. <laughs> He Maybe was, it's because he's, he's like, I can't be killed. Yeah, I'm bulletproof. Yeah, actually, that honestly, you start thinking that you're invincible. He, well, he was convinced that his instruments could be game changers because at a young age, he's already better than any other instrument maker in his city. And yeah. that, you know, his dad's the, the head instrument maker. It's so funny that that's even a thing. Like, yeah. it's known who's the best instrument maker in your town. I mean, we know who's the best instrument maker obviously. in Melbourne, obviously. But of it's course. funny to think even back in the 1800s. Yeah, that, that was they the knew. Case. Uh, he'd shown some famous composers his earlier designs on a trip to Paris, and they'd heaped praise on him. He'd also heard that the French government were hoping to re- revitalise the popularity of marching bands and were looking for new instruments, and Sax knew an opening when he saw one. Mm-hmm. I've got to get some of that marching band money. I love that a government's worrying about the big issues. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get marching bands oh God, back I'm up s- top where they belong? I'm so worried about marching <laughs> bands. Love- We've had a revolution only two decades earlier. <laughs> Let's get the marching bands! <laughs> Uh, on arrival in Paris, uh, Sax invited influential composer and conductor Hector Berlioz to review some of his inventions and improved instruments. This included the prototype for the saxophone, then called the bass horn. Berlioz published a long review where he heaped praise on Sax, calling him skillful beyond words. Wow. He referred to the bass horn as le saxophone. Oh. A name that the inventor absolutely could not get enough of. Oh, okay. He was like, fantastic. He's like, why did I call it that? Why did I call it? Oh, the bass horn. Yuck. Less saxophone. <laughs> yeah. 
Berlioz wrote, For works of my mysterious and solemn character, the saxophone is, in my mind, the most beautiful low voice known to this day. Wow. That's High praise review. indeed. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so beautiful and low. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> music Beautiful. to my ears. You got to think of how bad the instruments before that sounded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. That's what Mozart played. Yeah. Yeah. It was on those kind of. That was what a piano sounded like <laughs> in Mozart's day. Berlioz liked the new instrument enough that he wrote music specifically for it, and Sax even played the prototype publicly in his new friend's performance. And this was probably the first time it had ever been played publicly. In his early performances, Sax was so paranoid that someone would steal his yet-to-be-patented idea that he played behind a curtain so no one could see what he was doing. Oh, it's kind of like Eddie Van Halen. I've got, I wrote the same thing, yes! <laughs> and then I fact-checked that to see if that was a real thing. And it is? It is. Well, according to the BBC. So, for those that don't know, Eddie Van Halen, in his early days, his finger-tapped guitar solos were so unlike anything else anyone was doing at the time. His brother encouraged him to turn around during his solos before they got a record deal. That was oh, clever. Wow. So people it, it at the gig are like, I don't know what he's doing, but it sounds good. How, yeah, how's he, how's he moving around the guitar so quickly? And then, yeah, it was super influential, in, especially in hair metal and well, in metal generally. The more you know. I was reading about a, a the guitarist from Extreme. Um, met him and he was, and for some reason Eddie Van Halen wanted him to play something in front of him. And he's he he uh, I think his name's Nuno. And he was like re- recalling how he played an Eddie Van Halen solo back to him. And he was doing the finger tapping and stuff. And he was instantly regretting it. He's going, "Why did I pick this song?" <laughs> And, and Eddie Van Halen goes, don't worry about any of that silly double tapping stuff. <laughs> and he's just like, he's, he goes, I'm just full body cringing. Oh. But then he, later on, he, they became good friends. Good friends. But uh, oh, imagine. Imagine that baby being like, have you thought about playing chords or something? <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's more yours. Yeah. Your, your, try some chords. Your style. No? Have you heard of a G chord? Yeah, try that. Play just, with me. Just to, <laughs> I don't know, another scenario where you would... Um, be having to do the thing to the inventor Easy. and then going, oh, why did I oh try God. and do this thing that they mastered? Ah, oh, strong disagree. If I ever meet Adele, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna... I'm going to do the Adele. Adele. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Obviously. Hello, Adele. Hello, it's me, Adele. You know, easy. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jess. <laughs> it's going to be so confusing. Yeah. Because she'll be like, Wait, is, is your this name a mirror? actually <laughs> Adele? <laughs> wow. That. Oh, my God. You're not Adele, you're a mirror. Yeah. Hello, I'm a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's weird. All right. <laughs> huh, my mirror's talking to me. It's what? like if you ever met the inventor of the mirror and you started reflecting back at him. Totally, Is it like that? Totally, <laughs> yes. Dave, can you edit out everything I've said so far? I'm, I'm not having a good day. Dave, can you stretch out everything you said so far so it it's goes like for longer? It's like inventing the <laughs> mirror. mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you might be wondering... What is a saxophone? It's woodwind. It's brass. What is this thing? Well, it's and it is really hard to sum up how amazing it is that just one guy invented an instrument like the saxophone. Yeah. It's very, very rare it's so in musical funny. history. I'd never considered this as a thing at I've all. never thought to Google the history of the saxophone. Or just the idea that one, yeah. that is interesting that one person has invented something. But it's, now that you've said it, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, almost all your it other... It makes sax. <laughs> Now that you've said it, it makes sax. <laughs> well, to put it into context, almost all the other common woodwind instruments, your flutes, your oboes, your bassoons, go back hundreds of years, many into ancient times and beyond. There's evidence of flutes existing in Germany 43,000 years ago. Right. So the flute's got a long history. But what is the saxophone and why was it so revolutionary? Well, in his Devil's Horn book, Michael Siegel <laughs> contests that sax... Thought that in the orchestra, the strings, your violins, cellos, were often overwhelmed by the woodwinds, flutes, oboes, clarinets, and then these were both overpowered by brass instruments, your trumpets, your French horns, your tubers. Mm-hmm. So they're all trying to be louder than the other thing. Right. And then suddenly it's just, you can only hear the horns. Well, it is about the, who's the loudest, yeah, right? That's, that's how I yeah. approach this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Sax thought, why not make an instrument that combines all three instrumental groups? Great. He used a clarinet-like mouthpiece and a reed like those used in woodwind instruments. He then ran that into the most widely used bass horn of the day, much like a tuba. And overall, he created an instrument with tonal qualities like those of the woodwinds. The platypus of instruments. Yeah, and then it could be projected as loudly as the brasses, but also it had the flexibility of strings. Uh. Right, and he also put six strings on it as well. <laughs> yeah. The in, in, Just initial in prototype was pretty awful. <laughs> it was really cluttered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was like, I, why have 70 people in an orchestra when you can have one? Yeah. It also <laughs> had flashing lights yeah, and yeah, some yeah. cymbals that <laughs> went down between your knees. Yeah, you could, like yeah. a, a bass drum on his back. Yeah. yeah. When he moved, he had five dancers either side of him, <laughs> puppets. <laughs> it was obviously yeah. a bit busy on yeah. stage. Yeah. There was a lot happening. It's been streamlined. Yeah, yeah. Did I mention edit. he also did backflips? <laughs> <laughs> but in summary, it's a very versatile instrument. That's what he was hoping to go for. And just a quick note to say that despite being made of brass, they are categorised as woodwind instruments because sound is produced, as Matt said, by an oscillating reed, traditionally made out of a woody cane, mm. rather than lips vibrating in a mouthpiece cup, which is what the brass instrument family is. Right. Yeah, that's interesting because, yeah, instinctively you don't think of a sax as a woodwind instrument. No. No, because the outside is now still brass. Yeah. yeah. So what, what's a flute count? What's it's crazy. A, a flute is woodwind? Woodwind, yeah. Hey, what about a skin flute? <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's woodwind, if you know what I mean. Had regret face before you started yeah. the question, but you. I don't know why I still punish <laughs> yeah. myself and everyone listening by f- following know. through. It's just funny to watch the process of I hate this, but here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saxon visions having seven different types made that all had uh, different ranges, and they could come together like a string quartet or a choir. God, just a quartet of saxophones. That's a bit much. And they're all different sizes, so they have different ranges. Mm. Uh, the seven different instruments all had different, uh, sorry, all had the same fingering, lol, uh, the, <laughs> which meant that if you could play one, you could play them all. Sure, Which yeah, was yeah. quite clever, really. So you could if play you the could finger one, you could finger yeah, them exactly, all. Yeah, exactly, you know. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Uh, he also invented other instruments like the sax tuba and the sax tromba, which was smaller and could be played whilst riding a horse. <laughs> God, yeah, because I get so bored when I'm out yeah. riding oh my, my God. horse. I'm like, oh, I wish I could do oh something. I can never read a book because the horse keeps moving. It's yeah. like, ugh. You know but- what? The one thing that's less traumatizing for a horse than someone riding it all day is <laughs> someone blasting a horn directly <laughs> next to its ear. You hearing that horse? You getting that? You getting that? <laughs> <laughs> that is what. So, what was his logic there? Sax tromba. I think because in marching bands you'd have people on horses, right? And he was like, "Well, those instruments are really difficult to play on a horse, but this thing is a bit smaller, right, so okay. you could do it on a horse." Uh, Sax's friendship with his champion Berlioz opened up many doors for him. He met lots of other composers and musicians, and was even invited to play for King Louis Philippe and Queen Mary Emily, because he was also a great player himself. So soon he was able to raise the funds to open his own instrument factory. Fantastic. He also wrote a letter to the French war minister proposing that his new invention be adopted by military bands. But other instrument makers with established supply chains and a certain way of doing business watched on in horror as this upstart, who was clearly extremely talented and already changing their game, was muscling in on their territory. Many agreed he had to be stopped. Whoa. That's like a bit of tall poppy, hey? Yeah. Definitely. Hey, he's making something really good over there. Stop it. Well, we've got two options. Be inspired and try to be even better or fuck, fuck him it. up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, can I just say they definitely went for option B in the story. Wow. It is funny because I, I don't associate the sacks with armies. No. You're just like coming into battle. <laughs> it's because it's such a sexy instrument. Yeah, it is sexy, isn't it? It makes you want to fuck. Yeah, yeah oh not, yeah, big not time. fight. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Make love, not war. Yeah, it would mm. be. It would be too peaceful. Yeah, those goddamn hippies. <laughs> well, it'd be peaceful for a moment. You're seeing then... Nazis and <laughs> Russians making out. Just going for it. Yeah, it's beautiful. So the musicians, instrument makers and conductors were not keen on the overhaul and new instruments in the marching bands. 
But Sachs had become well connected by this point and a commission was established to figure out the way forward for the military bands. One of the directors of these military bands, Mikel Carafa, had the idea of sticking with the current instruments, but just getting more players. That was, he was like, why don't we just expand? Then we'll be louder and better. It'd be great. So the commission came to a conclusion. They would let the people decide with a duel. Yeah. A musical duel. Yes, the best kind. In fact, Sax was frequently dueling other musicians. He was constantly demanding satisfaction. <laughs> and then they'd pull out their instrument, he'd pull out his instrument, and invariably his would be better than theirs. But how, well, I mean, who's judging that? In a duel, one of them is dead. Dead, yeah. <laughs> oh, he played them to death. <laughs> He, he beat him over there. He beat them to death with a saxophone. <laughs> yeah, they're they're quite uh, heavy and yeah. um, sturdy. So all be- the best instruments are the heaviest instruments. Yeah, that's why I played piano. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you, gonna fuck you yeah, up. Yeah, you're just as like, long as I can get a crane in here, like, one second, please. Can you just stand on that X for a few seconds? <laughs> So he's frequently dueling people, but this was the most important musical battle of his life. Oh, my God. It's a quote from a 2014 article in The Independent. It is difficult to underestimate the importance of the army's role in society at the time. Military bands were seen as major sources of national prestige and a valuable cultural medium. The competition was, quite simply, the talk of France. Ooh. It was Team Sachs versus Team Carafa. On April 22nd, two groups went head-to-head in Paris at the future side of the Eiffel Tower with 20,000 spectators watching on. (laughs) It's it's like a stadium watching. It's so funny how things, like we come across this all the time. Yeah. Crowds will rock up to anything. (laughs) Oh, someone's going outside? Well, let's all go outside. (laughs) Honestly, you couldn't get a moment to yourself. (laughs) Where are we going? (laughs) Well, I was going to go make love to my wife, but I, I guess everyone should come over. <laughs> that does seem like a real Dave thing, too. You get off the couch, where are we going? We're going hmm? Something happening? <laughs> You're like a puppy. <laughs> where are you going? Are you leaving? I can't be left alone. <laughs> <laughs> he really can't. So with 20,000 people watching on, the idea was to have 45 players play two pieces of music. 45 versus 45. But seven of Sax's crew didn't show up after being bribed to stay away. Classic. Oh, dirty pool mm, by... The big muso. The guy that we can't remember the name of. I mm, wonder who wins. <laughs> Carafa. Carafa. And what's Carafa's deal? So he got his own so instrument he, he invented? I don't think so. No, he just wants it. To, he wants the status quo. He loves being the director of the military band. He's like, I love when they play these tubers and clarinets. And, yeah. Right. And I don't like change. He, honestly, he says, I don't like change. And also other the instrument makers are saying, well, if he comes along and we have to use his instruments, then what are we going to do? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So everyone except the higher-ups are against him. Sax wasn't one to back down when these people didn't show up, and he instead grabbed two of his own saxophones and joined the battle himself. <gasps> Did he play two saxophones at once? <laughs> <laughs> he's Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Double impact. Uh, can someone, uh, last week after you talked about some Jean Claude Van Damme train thing, no, truck thing, <laughs> they animated that sort of. Yeah. yeah, which is great. Now we need you to animate it so Dave is also now playing two saxophones <laughs> whilst riding two trucks. Whilst riding two trucks as Jean Claude Van Damme's body. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is a Belgian guy from, as well. The muscles from, from probably the second most famous Belgian after. Poirot. Uh, well, okay, it goes Poirot, the muscles from Brussels. John claude Van Damme, and then... The sexy sax man. <laughs> Adolf Sax. Honourable mention to Urge, the Tintin inventor. <laughs> Kim Class is number five. Yeah, not bad, Kim. Oh, Kim, yeah, Kim Class is... Not bad. Justine yeah. Ennen. <laughs> trying to think of any other Belgians I know. Oh, Personally. Tennis players, are they? Well, that might be it. <laughs> Famous Belgians. Who comes up first? Come on. Come on, Sax. <laughs> uh, Rubens, the... Painter, Adolf Sax is there, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and they've listed Audrey Hepburn. Ah. Okay. She's very surprising. Yeah, I thought she was a... Uh... Have we done a Hepburn She's a uh, British, No, I she came up in the Oscars report. Though. But she was oh, yeah. born in Brussels. Yeah, there, we there, you go. there you go. There you go. Anyway. But of course, she, she's... Where did she move to? England or America, probably? Yeah, one of Yeah, those. English. English. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> So the scene is set. Seven people haven't rocked up. He's grabbed two saxophones. He's joined it himself. 20,000 people 
watching on. After the pers- first piece of music, the battle was already decided. The crowd loved sax and his group's sound and screamed for more. Uh. Carafa's band tried to play on, but despite having less players, sax's crew were much louder and simply drowned out their opponents. That's so brutal. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Imagine playing, but you can't even be heard. Art as a competition always sucks. So, yeah, no They're good. They're trying their heart out on these little flutes or whatever. <laughs> Just shut up and listen to them. Come on, they're having a go. <laughs> Let them have a nice time. Come on. We're all winners of the Battle of the Bands. <laughs> then we can all go to the park or something. Yeah. <laughs> all of us. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Real sheep, aren't they? Well, long story short, he won the contract. His new instruments were chosen to uh, be used for the military bands, and sax was simply the talk of the town. <gasps> Which town? A uh, Paris. Oh. Uh, he won his patent for the instrument, and it was soon adopted also by the Italian, Spanish, and Hungarian military bands. Oh, right. So the instrument soon began to spread all over the world. Wow. The money came in, and he hired people to set up a production house in Paris. It was all happening. But now, as I mentioned before, his success really annoyed a lot of people. Motivated by fear and jealousy, these detractors would do anything to stop him, and I mean anything. Oh, dear. The competitors that he threatened teamed up against their newfound enemy and formed a coalition called the Association of United Instrument Makers. And they were united, all right, united to take town sacks. That was really the whole point of the club. Take town sacks? Is that where, that was sort of where he lived? Well, take sacks to town. Oh. <laughs> and then take <laughs> him a down. Little, for a party. Yeah, for and a then, pub meal. And then to drop his pants and embarrass the, the pants off of him. Oh, no. Which were already no. down. To expose his devil's horn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Members paid money to be a part of this club, and the sole reason was to fuck him up. Wow. That was the only reason it existed. The money was then used to sue Sachs. They repeatedly took him to court, challenging his patents, saying he didn't invent his instruments and that he just copied other people's designs. They were baseless claims designed to tie him up in endless court cases, distract him from his work, and drain his funds. Ah, oh, dogs. They even created fake evidence by saying Sachs had copied an earlier design, and they did this by taking one of his instruments, filing off the serial numbers, and then replacing them with their own. <sighs> this was thrown out of court, along with their other claims. How embarrassing. Yeah, so petty and it's just weird. I hope it backfires big time. Yeah. Well, to counteract this, he withdrew his patent, and decided to redesign the shape of the saxophone. He's like, fine, I'll reinvent the game again. If you think that I've copied someone else's design, I'll make something completely new. So he withdrew the patent, and in an effort to stop the ongoing court cases, he gave his opponents one year to make his own design. He said, well, if someone else has made this before me, I won't make any claims for a year, and if you can make it, then you can have it. <laughs> right. Wow. <laughs> that's that's. That's pretty ballsy. Well, yeah. Love it. If he's ripped someone else off, surely they could make their own instrument in the ensuing months. Yeah. You but of course, year, that's heaps of time. Of course, they could not. But even like they've got one to copy, right? Yeah. But like, they, even still. He was the best instrument maker in Europe and they just couldn't replicate his design. That's amazing. Incredible. So it he was would be arrogant. It's pretty funny if they go, but, yeah, great. And they whip one together yeah, in a couple really of days. <laughs> uh, Sachs used the 12 months to make his own design even better. In June 1846, he painted the design of the modern saxophone, the shape we're all imagining now with the hook. Yeah, right. Before this, it had been much more conical, essentially like a clarinet crossed with a trumpet. Yeah, okay. But now it's got the hook. He comes back with that and they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it must have, the first one they saw, they must have thought, this looks silly. Yeah. But it, what, what do you know what that did to it? What having that uh, upturn... At the base, did oh, I don't think I think it improved uh, just quality overall, staying in tune, and also it was louder now. Wow, okay, so like a very lot loud, of, a lot of stuff it made it better in all ways. Well, he, he was constantly kind of, tinkering, making it better, and it's got a cool. I mean, it is a cooler look, probably. Although it's hard to imagine it without it now. But it is cool. It yeah. is cool. It sort of is. I can't. I don't know. It depends on who's playing it, I guess. If it's Wilbur Wilde, obviously, very cool. cool, king of cool. Yeah. That's the king of cool that he referred sunglasses. to in the title. He'd wear sunglasses yeah. while he did it. Sunglasses inside. Inside. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Try to deny that that's not cool. I wouldn't. Good I'll luck. Look. It'd be embarrassing. Yeah. A German instrument maker named Wilhelm Weiprecht, great name, accused Sachs of stealing the idea of the saxophone from him. So Sachs 
took the saxophone to Wyprecht and presented him with it and asked him to play it. Pretty He's like, simple. if you invent, if I stole this from you, have a go. The man couldn't even muster a sound out of it and quickly admitted that the design for the invention was a complete mystery to him. Wow. <laughs> He's like, all right, you caught me in a lie here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I don't know. What is this? So the legal case is abated for now, but the attempts to ruin him did not. It's, it's, the trick for him would be getting this message out. He's like wrecked so many people <laughs> in a short amount of time. If he was able to do this live on YouTube or something, yep. then the, everyone would have seen it and been like, okay, well, this is embarrassing. This guy's a bad ass. But not, like, I guess a lot of people just wouldn't have heard and some people still hear him the first time. He's full of shit. It's fake news, guys. I guess that does still happen now. <laughs> yeah. So, but the legal cases stopped because he kept winning them. But so they uh, went for even uh, dirtier tactics. Uh. Sax's plans and stools were stools. <laughs> Tools were frequently stolen. They also <laughs> stole his shits. Maybe <laughs> this is where he keeps his secrets. <laughs> no, they stole his plans and tools. His factory, quote, mysteriously caught fire and burnt down. Uh. Another time, one of his workers, who was the same height and build as Sax, was shot at whilst leaving the workshop in what was an apparent assassination attempt. Bloody hell. He's just making musical <laughs> instruments. I know. So fucking and it, petty. And it's that everyone, yeah, it's so weird because everyone's going, this is, this is a great new instrument, apart yeah. from instrument makers, who surely should be the most excited. But they're not. They don't get to make the it's instruments a, though, so they don't get to cash a, in anymore. Yeah, it's just the money. It's thing. all about the money. I, yeah, look, I should. It's not like, about the music. I don't know. It's just disappointing. <laughs> you think the music men and women, probably men, uh, should be all about have, the music. Would have been loving it. Yeah. And going, hey, all right, great, I'm inspired. And you know what? We're all we're all running our own race. You know, just because somebody else is having some success, he also falls downstairs a lot. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait. Just wait. He'll he'll die eventually. Haven't they? Heard the, what's that phrase? Rising tide lifts all ships. Exactly right. Hey. He's he's making music better. So rise, learn from. And they're him. hoping that the rising tide will drown him <laughs> in a horrible accident. Honestly, I didn't like him before when you're like he's brash and arrogant. I was like this guy kind of sounds like he sucks. But now I'm rooting for him because yeah. everyone's he, being so weirdly petty. He has become the underdog, and it's because it was rumored, obviously, that the United Association of Instrument Makers are behind these assassination and you know firebomb attempts. Yeah. The constant court cases really took their toll financially, leading Sachs to declare bankruptcy three times oh, in his life: that's... in 1852, 1873, and 1877. 1873. That's the year that the St Kilda Football Club was formed. Wow. And incident, did he uh, invest early and he lost all his money? <laughs> that might have been it. <laughs> <laughs> in 1853, more bad fortune struck his life when he noticed a small black growth on one of his lips. It continued to grow and grow over the next five years, becoming so large that it stopped him from being able to eat and drink. Oh. He knew something had to be done and there were two options on the table. So it's now people are like, that's obviously a cancerous growth. Yeah. Surgery was one option, which would remove part of his jaw and his lip. Should oh. he live, presumably he'd never be able to play his instruments again. Oh. The other option was to take herbal medicine from an Indian doctor. He went with the Indian doctor and it worked. <gasps> what? The tumour began to get smaller and within six months it was completely gone. Get out of town. Yeah, so natural medicine. He should have acted sooner. Hey, if it's from the earth, it's of the greatest worth. <laughs> So we can chop that down as he'd survived yet another brush with death. And yes, Matt is pretty proud of himself with that one. Matt, I, I love your peace sign, Nicholas, by the way. <laughs> I didn't say anything before, but I love it. I did not coin that one, Dave. It's a very cool tie-dye t-shirt you've got on. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a cool bandana. I like, I like your look. Hey. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> we'll give peace a chance. Just yeah. let me finish this report. <laughs> Uh, but the you know, so he survived another rather brush with uh, with death. But the United Association kept up their assault. When his patents expired, I imagine at the time it looks like they don't last that long. They swept in and profited from the very designs that they had tried to stop. What the fuck? The hypocrisy. Of so they start people. doing knockoff, shittier versions of the saxophone. Hector Berlioz, the conductor who had championed sax when he was younger, once wrote, "The persecutions he suffers are worthy of the Middle Ages." Such is the hatred inventors inspire in rivals who are incapable of inventing anything themselves. So yeah. those bitter pricks. That's insane. 
At 72 years old and completely over the constant battles, Sachs made an appeal to the public by publishing an article that outlined the ways the association had wronged him over the previous decades. The legal battles over nothing and the constant persecution. He wrote of them, quote, Before me, I am proud to say, the musical industry was nothing or next to nothing in France. I created this industry. I carried it to an unrivaled height. I developed the legions of workers and musicians, and it is above all my counterfeiters who have profited from my work. End quote. Wow. Sad to say, the public didn't really care, but it did shame many famous musicians and industry figures to band together to aid the man that had genuinely changed their industry. Because of this, he was granted a small pension. Okay. So he got a little bit of money towards the end of his life. For creating an industry. Yeah. So he should, I mean, he should have been wealthy beyond. Yeah, he should have been. Wildest imagination. So rich. But he wasn't. Sadly, all good things must come to an end. And Sachs died in 1894 at the age of 79 in relative poverty, never really enjoying his success in his lifetime. That sucks. 79 back then, though, is a really good inning, so yeah. isn't it? Like, Especially he's lived a long life. For a man that probably should have died at the age of three. Yeah, yeah. true, yeah. But, yeah, that he didn't get to enjoy the spoils of his hard work is very disappointing. I'm wondering if he made a deal with the devil. That's why he was immortal for the first 79 years of his life. That is the devil's number, 79. Yeah. And the devil the, uh, the devil said, sure, but you've got to create a, a horn. <laughs> So sexy. <laughs> People will not be able to say no. <laughs> sexy horn. By the time he died, he'd lodged 46 patents, and it wasn't just the saxophone and other instruments he created. He also filed a patent for a device that improved the sound of the signals of railways, an apparatus for pulmonary gymnastics, and a design for an egg-shaped concert hall where acoustics would have been revolutionary. Wow. wow. Did anyone ever build the egg shape? I don't believe so. Oh, I love the idea of it. That would look cool too. It would look cool. What? Someone should do it. If it would sound good as well, it would look sick. Yeah. That's everything. You're ticking all the boxes. Imagine an egg-shaped building. <laughs> the I mean, possibilities are endless. I can't. I can't. I can. My brain isn't quite powerful enough to. <laughs> but I genuinely think that would be, that would be if it was like nice, a sheer exterior yeah. in the shape of an egg. Hey, you've just created the next, you know, everyone's coming to that place. Yeah. Getting you... photos out the front, pretending they're pushing the egg yeah. or sitting, yeah. laying Laying the egg. The egg. <laughs> yeah, classic. Sitting Honestly, on the egg. If, if a city is listening right now, one of the world's cities. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a city. You really should take this opportunity. Yeah. And, yeah, call it the sax, sax egg. Saxy egg. What about egg world? Egg world. <laughs> The world of eggs. Yeah, that's really good. I don't want to go to that. You don't want to go to egg world? No. You don't like eggs. Yeah, no. But it wait, you, is it the shape of eggs that you hate? Uh, no. But so good point. But egg world does really imply there's going to be like egg food trucks. Oh, and okay. oh, but how good would the brunch be in egg world? It'd be awesome, you'd think. You'd think. Oh, I don't know. Egg world. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm thinking, mmm, delicious foods here at Egg World. <laughs> yeah, come on down. Bring your I, family too. Why wouldn't you call it, you call it uh, the Melbourne Musical Egg Porium or something? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Music. Uh, or no, maybe you just wouldn't have egg in the title. Let the egg do the talking. Or like you'd go for something more fancy like Ovo, you know? Yeah. Like... Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. M- the Melbourne Musical Ovo, Ovo Hall. Ovo Hall. Overhaul. Overhaul. We got there. Thank you, everyone. Oh, where took... did we go? <laughs> no. We got there, but where is there? I mean, are we happy to be here? In the middle was Egg World. The world is Egg World. That's where we are. We should have stopped at Egg World. <laughs> we should never have started. We never should have started. <laughs> well, Sax, see these other inventions uh, tickle your fancy. You also invent, envisioned a giant organ that would be assembled on a hillside in Paris and was so large that if it were played, all of Paris could hear it. Wow. wow. That's a big organ. That's incredible. They didn't make it. Well, yeah, fair enough, because how can you play an instrument that everyone can hear and pick a time that's convenient for everyone <laughs> Also, to hear? like... I've got I, night shift. Yeah, I'm sleeping. I imagine the people live on that hillside. It's like, oh, we'll just have to demolish these 10,000 houses yeah. <laughs> and replace it with a big organ. The people will love the music. Mm. They but can pro- live in the music. <laughs> Probably his greatest potential invention was called the Saxo Cannon. Yes. Which, uh, no, I don't need to hear anything. I'm on board. What do you think it is? It's a saxophone that shoots T-shirts out of it. 
Yeah. I thought it was a cannon that shot saxophones okay. out of it. Okay, which one of us is closer? Uh, you're both uh, pretty similar. Here. It was a, a, a giant cannon uh-huh. that could fire a 500-ton, 10-metre-wide mortar that he hoped could destroy an entire city in one shot. Okay. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Is it- we went from, I'm bringing joy and music to the people. <laughs> to destroy a city. Making uh, egg buildings. Is it obvious that he's an angry man? <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's like, as he's loading up the cannon, you did this to me. <laughs> yeah. Which city does he want to destroy? Yeah. All of them. Any particular houses you're aiming <laughs> at? Maybe those of your enemies? Egg world. <laughs> egg world, I bet go. you that giant... That giant organ also had like a, a trick in it where you played a certain chord, Paris explodes. Yeah. So it does sound like he just wanted to explode. It's a, oh, no, no, no. It's a, a certain chord that uh, he's distorted it so that it's such a pitch that it makes your head explode. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets his enemies to test it out. Yeah, you should play it. Play it. I bet you pl- can't play this chord. <laughs> <laughs> he's putting on, he's putting yeah, he, earplugs he's in. He's wearing earmuffs. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go for it. Enjoy. <laughs> So, so that's the weird and wacky life of Adolf Sax. But of course, the history of the saxophone does not end there. Not by a long shot. Oh, didn't die with him. <laughs> Amazingly, no. Oh. Spoiler. Uh, there was a decline in the popularity of saxophones in Paris after Sax's death, mostly because the saxophone teaching at the Paris Conservatory was suspended from 1870 to 1900. But during this time over in the USA, it really took off. Mm. Mostly because of Patrick Gilmore, the first American band leader to feature the saxophone. He worked with virtuistic saxophonist Edward A. Lefebvre, and from there the popularity of the instrument only grew. He had... (laughs) I wrote here, I was like, what does that mean? I wrote to myself, he had a Lefebvre for saxophone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, at the Dang. time, I was like, I know that. I'll know what that means later. I'm looking at he had a Lefebvre fall. Oh, good. Yeah, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. Past Dave took a break after that one. That, that thought did go through my head as well. I must admit, and I went, "Come on, Matt, you've You're had a lot of swings that. today. You are better <laughs> than you've this. had a lot of sw- <laughs> you've had a lot of swings and misses. Not again." <laughs> It took off so much that at the start of the 20th century, the epicenter for the saxophone was no longer in Europe, but in the United States. Wow. In fact, in Europe, in 1903, Pope Pius X was so alarmed by the incursion of the saxophone into sacred music that he issued a prohibition against its use. That's so... So he fully banned it. That's so dumb. Thinking it was the devil's horn. And like, why, are why? We, why are we playing this in hymns and things? This, this is... This instrument is so sexy, it's too tempting. It's funny, yeah, the short-sightedness of, of old church. Mm. Now they're like, we'll do anything to get people in. What do you want? We've got strippers now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the sex one's not sexy enough for you. What do you want? We've got strippers. We've got K-pop playing whilst strippers. Come on, What, what, what do you want? We've got gambling. Hmm? <laughs> Come over here. Come sin in this bin over here. The sin bin. Come in the sin bin. Yeah, but uh, back then they really there was an arrogance there. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's funny. incorruptible. Funny to think now they'd be like, yeah, saxophone. Yeah, bring it on. If that's oh. like, going to bring a crowd in. Yeah. yeah, will you come if there's a saxophone? Well, All right. Well, here's Get ten saxophones. Yeah, here's the Pope playing playing careless whisper <laughs> with a hologram of George Michael. <laughs> huh? Some huh? of the kids want. Come on. Is this going to be big on TikTok? Just answer me that. <laughs> But Imagine that's their thought of what's going to be big on TikTok. <laughs> the, Pope the Pope and George Michael. <laughs> Two things the kids love. Yeah. Yeah. The Pope's like, well, when I was younger, this was really popular. <laughs> uh, in America, the Ladies' Home Journal accused it of rendering listeners incapable of distinguishing between right and wrong what? and good and evil. It's an instrument, you fucking moron. No, but I thought it was... The devil's horn. That's where this comes from. Isn't it? It's funny because you think surely God created everything, including the horn, right? Or at least didn't he? But then they think the devil might have gotten the ear of uh, Gary Sachs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Gary Gary Beers. No, what's his name? Does Gary Gary Beers play the sax in no, excess? No, no. It was, it, Damn. It was uh, Kirk Pengilly, I think, was sax man, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Disappointing. Also a good name, though. That is Imagine good. your name being Kirk Pengilly so and you've good. got only the second best name <laughs> second in the band. Mm. Oh. Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. I'm going to need a few minutes here. <laughs> Everyone give me a sec. 
Gary beers. The Gary so nice, they garyed him twice. <laughs> <laughs> Another swing <laughs> and a hit. Oh, Whoa. out of the park. <laughs> I still don't think enough people know there's a guy called Gary. Gary Beers no, out there. You need to spread the word. Got to spread that. It's a good word. word. That's a tweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tweet. That's that good. <laughs> it should be it's tweeted. That good. Bloody hell! Just tweet Gary Gary Beers. Okay. I'll retweet it. And that's all it says, Gary Gary Beer. Gary Gary Beers. Is that all it says? Well, I mean. Yeah. All right. That's I'll... just my idea. I'm I'm not a Twitter master like you, so. <laughs> Um, well, yeah. I'll well, let you. You don't know, think man. it should be like the, the PSA? There was a man out there. For those I, that don't know, or maybe it could be. I don't think enough people know. Yeah, that's there's good. a man named Gary Gary Beers. I'm just gonna write Gary Gary Beers, uh-huh. <laughs> and then I'll reply to that tweet with. I just think uh, I'm just gonna double check if he, how he spells his name. Yeah, is it, it's double R or is I it think one, one of R? them is double and one of them. Oh, God. oh now that's yeah, fun. First Gary's two R, second Gary's one R. Just to make it complicated. Yeah. Gary, Gary, beers. <laughs> and then I'll reply to that tweet saying, just, just, just thought. Yep. Uh, don't, no, don't reckon. <laughs> yeah. Enough people. Yep. No, there is a man out there. <laughs> this is too wordy. I love it. No, no, it's good. With the name. Yes. Gary, Gary, beers. Right, and if everyone listening to this could go back now, a few days, and retweet it, yeah, that'd be great. Perfect. We'd love to go viral with the tweet that just says "Gary Gary." Beers. Yeah, that would be good. All right, great. It's out there in the ether. All right, well done. Already two likes. Very quickly, people are on board with that. Thank you, Alex and Will Gupwell. <laughs> well done. In case you're listening. <laughs> Which you probably are. Let's but they were be just mindlessly scrolling, saw that, went like. In and that now, second. Yeah. And now if they're listening, they're going to be like, whoa. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you though? I reckon they won't be listening. They're, they don't even know me. They've just been, <laughs> searching? They've been searching for Gary Gary beers and finally. Somebody's talking about him. They found what they're looking for. But Gary's so nice, they named him twice. I love it. I love it so much. Is that what you're writing now? All right. No, that's that's No, no, that's yours. That's you. All right. I'll reply to that again. (laughs) He's a Gary so nice, they named him twice. That's good. That's good stuff. All right. Are you? I assume you're editing all this out? I was about to say, someone's retweeted it. What idiot would retweet this? It's Jess Perkins. (laughs) (laughs) I said I would. (laughs) And I, I stand by my word. All right, everyone get on board with this. I've still got a little bit of sax history to get through Oh, here. yeah, okay. okay. I guess. we got to get to the Hitler bit. Yeah, the Hitler bit. All right, All right fast forward to that. Uh, well, it's coming up soon because despite, Talk fast, then. Well, despite the Vatican and the American <laughs> Ladies Home Journal saying it's no good, it took off in America. They were first used in vaudeville, uh, vaudeville and then ragtime bands and then in the big bands led by Duke Ellington, Count Basie and Fletcher Henderson. It became a staple of big band jazz and swing in the 30s. The sax needed to be altered to compete with loud trumpets by this time, boisterous drums and dancing feet. So the mouthpiece was made smaller and uh, more parallel, which gave the sax the sound needed for jazz and dance music. So it was, it has been changed slightly. Right, okay. Uh, Coleman Hawkins played with Fletcher Henderson from 1923 to 1934 and established the tenor saxophone as a jazz solo instrument. So it, st- it started getting very popular with jazz musicians. Right. Oh. Whilst taking off in America, in Germany, when the Nazis came to power, they banned it as an instrument of American, quote, jungle music. Because Hitler was deeply racist and the instrument had become popular with black Americans... Wait, Hitler was racist? Deeply. <laughs> really? Oh, he didn't... He, he banned it, so you weren't allowed to play the saxophone. And there's reports He of- also hate, he hates love and he loves hate. So that's that's why he knows that when the sax is played, people make love, not war. Mm -hmm. And And he's like, no, make war, make war, not love. Yeah, he was a virgin. This is something they don't know. As long as you don't count incest as sex, (laughs) he was a virgin. Okay. Allegedly. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, did you think Hitler was going to come after us? I don't don't want to be dragged through the mud by the estate of Adolf Hitler. (laughs) Imagine. Out of all the things that's been written about him, they're like, we'll go after this podcast. Hey, hey, he'd fucked. 
<laughs> Imagine defending that. Imagine us coming on ne- next week. We have to start with a statement saying, <laughs> "All right, last week we said some things in the heat of the moment." Um, <laughs> just like to clarify that Adolf Hitler has definitely fucked. And here's a list of. <laughs> they didn't come fuck. after because like, what a little while ago we really went. We called him a little bitch, <laughs> and they they didn't come after us for that. You mm. know what though? Because we can prove it. Mm. But calling him a big V, that they will not stand with for that. But he is a little bitch. Yeah, and when a he, big V. Dave, you got to do a report on him one day. But I think he, it's time that his story was told. <laughs> <laughs> for so long, it's. <laughs> People have been like, who was this man? Yeah. There's no documentaries on SBS every night of the week. A lot of people talking about a few horrendous actions. Yeah. A few uh, horrendous <laughs> Oh, dearie me. What, what, what's going on today? Uh, uh, it's early? Yeah, I mean, the pun king early. is just in form. That's what's happening. Anyway. But he wasn't the only dictator to take a stand against the devil's horn. Oh, God. Stalin despised the instrument of capitalist oppression, as he, as he thought it, so much that he not only banned it, but he sent its players to Siberia, oh. sent them to camps. Many other European countries were pressured into following the ban during this time. What the which fuck? This re- is, I mean... It's a fucking instrument, you moron. Many of which remained in place until the 1980s. What the fuck? Oh, the 80s was the, yeah, the that's peak what, of the sax solo. As soon as you heard Careless Whisper, they were like, actually. Yeah, I take it all back. changes everything. As soon as they heard Clarence Clemens just ripping it apart in Jungle Land or one of the boss's big hits. That's right. But the re- the Vatican ban has reportedly never been lifted. You still gonna have a sax? You can't play sax. I mean, I doubt that it's in force now. But like, they've never officially come out and had a statement saying actually the sax is okay by us. That's nuts. It's an instrument. I don't understand that at all. It's crazy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, it is weird that these racists uh, uh-huh. have some sort of illogical thoughts. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, and... and it's ama- So that it was all born out of a racist idea that it was popular with black people. Yeah, black Americans, yeah. And so, therefore, just ban it. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if I can lose any more respect for these races. Yeah. Well, that yeah. I mean, that's it. I think, and Stalin's idea was it's it's just big in America. Oh, right. He's like, well, it's these big capitalist cap- pigs. Capos are playing the the saxo. But it's like, did he ban other things, or he just picked the saxophone? I mean, yeah. To be to be fair, it was. Were they allowed to watch Mash? The list of. <laughs> The list of offences that you could get sent to a Siberian camp for were many oh and ever changing. Yeah, right. Changing. Uh, he'd also be good for a, an interesting but horrifying report. <laughs> but over in America, the instrument went from strength to strength. The modern layout of the saxophone emerged during the 1930s and 40s, with the layout of the keys changing, making it even easier to play. Right. Ah, oh, okay. From there, the instrument was part of many major changes in American music. Jazz bebop in the 1940s, pioneered by Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, and Thelonious Monk playing long solos. Oh. Tism had a song about Charlie the Bird Parker, and it was called uh, Tonight Dr. Harry Visits the Home of Charlie the Bird Parker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> In the 1940s, the swing bands gave rise to rhythm and blues, and the sax was again front and centre. The R&B saxophone players influenced later genres, including rock and roll, soul, funk, and of course, ska. Skibbity boop. Skibbity boop boop boop. I love it. I love ska music. Then in the 1950s, John Coltrane blasted his tenor sax at the forefront of free jazz, and also on the tenor was... Sonny Rollins, who was still alive at age ninety. Wow, amazing! I did so. All all those names you said—they're all saxophonists. Yeah, different so types, tenor and alto. Big, yeah, yeah, they're all the sort of big names in jazz. And I'm like, I'm obviously pretty cool, but um, <laughs> I have I don't know jazz that well apart from some of those names. Mm. So I was assuming they'd be like pianists and trumpeters and stuff as well, but it's mainly the big names are usually saxophonists. A lot. I mean, there are, like, famous trumpet players. Satchmo. Well, like, Satchmo, Miles Davis and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, um, hmm. yeah, and but, you know, some of these big, big names, John Coltrane, who played on a few Miles Davis records. Uh, then in the 60s, uh, Col- Coltrane and other players like Sam Rivers and Pharaoh Sanders headed the avant-garde movement and took the instrument to a whole new place. 
Then in the 70s, Bruce Springsteen, David Bowie and Jerry Rafferty, of course, Baker Street, rocked out with sax in their hits. In the 80s, Careless Whisper and Simply the Best were all headlined by the sax. Tism had a saxophonist for their uh, first decade or so. Love it. Yeah. So good. It was, I think, just every, any rock or rock adjacent band in the 80s, it was like you'd have guitar, bass, drums, sax. sax. It would be in that order, I think. That's awesome. Then in 1986, the seminal smooth jazz album Duo Tones was released by Kenny G. <laughs> he has gone on to be one of the best-selling artists of all time, selling 75 million records. Is that true? Yeah. Bloody hell. Wow. Kenny G. He was in a uh, Bad Mums 2, a Christmas <laughs> special, which I watched at Christmas time, and, yeah, he had a little cameo in that. Huh. That's how big he is. He was in Bad Mums 2. Bad Mums 2. that big. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, wasn't Susan Sarandon in that? Yeah. Was she one of the mums? Honestly, the, moms? the mums were bad, and I said it a lot, uh, to the point that I annoyed the others watching with us. <laughs> Jeez, they are bad mums, aren't they? <laughs> 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 so you were mum shaming? Uh, yes. Okay. I was mum shaming. Yeah. Jeez, these are... <laughs> God, I mean, these it was the title mums. of the film. <laughs> I thought that opened the door for me to mum shame, <laughs> which is the only reason I really wanted to watch it, because I love mum I shaming. Love mum I love shame. going down to a park, just sitting yeah. there by myself and going, wouldn't have done that if I was a mum. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Same. Same. Just booing mums. Yeah, boo. Boo. No. no mums Show allowed. Show more affection. <laughs> Show less affection. Show less affection at times as well. Bit much. <laughs> bit much, mum. Just keep yelling, bit much. Oh, bit much. Uh, then in the 90s, Americans elected a saxophone playing president in Bill Clinton. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Most powerful man in the world playing saxophone. And that was that was a, like a, quite a famous moment. I'm, I don't quite remember it. But that, do you, you guys wouldn't either, but it was like, I remember it being parodied on The Simpsons and yeah. maybe he played on one of the Tonight Shows or something. And it was like impersonators would then carry a saxophone as well. That Just to be like, like huh? thing. I'm Bill, yeah. I'm Bill. See, if you can't tell from my grey wig, uh, maybe you can tell from this yeah. saxophone. I'm I like. did not have sexual relations with that woman. Start high-fiving people. That would almost definitely have been done on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah, right? I reckon. 100%. <laughs> uh, then in 1997, we learned how Lisa Simpson got her saxophone in Season 9, Episode 3, Lisa's Sax. I literally just watched that last week. Oh, great. Yeah. It's a good app. Well, around the same time, the New York Times wrote of how Lisa Simpson started a sax craze. Ah. So she popularised it, especially for uh, younger women. In the same article, Matt Groening rep- uh, reported that he frequently got fan mail that included young girls holding saxophones in photos, oh, saying, cool. I started because of Lisa. That's cute. But it all started as a joke. This is a quote from that Times article. The only reason Lisa plays the saxophone is that Matt Groening thought it would be funny for an eight-year-old girl to play the saxophone. Not just a sax, he corrected, but a baritone sax. But she doesn't always play a baritone sax because the animators don't know what it looks like, so it changes shape and colour from show to show. <laughs> just show them a photo, yeah. man. I was going to say Google it, but they might not have had that uh, ability. Pre, pre-internet. I, they also had to file a correction at the bottom of this article that's been like filed from 1997 because they originally referred to Bleeding Gums Murphy as Lisa's band leader rather than her mentor. Ugh. And all I can say is, geez, I hope someone <laughs> got fired for that blunder. <laughs> the band leader, of course, being Dave, the Simpsons fan. <laughs> oh, I've got blown blank on his name. I can, can you think of him? I can hear him. He has a... Yeah, he has a Alicia. <laughs> that's no impersonation of him. Does that oh, ring any bells? Of course. Dewey Largo. Dewey okay, Largo. I, did not know I didn't know that. I, I thought. Didn't know that. I knew it was Largo. That's Damn. interesting. I thought I would have known that name. I reckon no, I've never heard it. it. Mr. Largo. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Playing the saxophone. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I'm sure they also did that on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt. Uh, in 2020, the Sydney Morning Herald uh, wrote an article on how the sax is making a comeback. Whoa. To quote from there, the sax revival is being led by world-leading musicians, including The Weeknd, whose recent hit In Your Eyes reached number 13 on the Australian Top 40 uh, charts. Oh, uh, yeah. And the 1975, whose April song If You're Too Shy picked at number 12 on the Billboard charts. 
both featured sax solos reminiscent of the 80s. Yeah, ah. In Your Eyes has got a very 80s feel. Well, Diane told me a senior lecturer at the Queensland Conservatorium in the same article is quoted as saying, the saxophone's reputation had suffered from being the butt of many jokes and parodies. The sexy sax man, careless whisper prank video, have you seen that? No. On YouTube has racked up more than 41 million views, but it's definitely making a comeback. That's when a man, like, shirtless with a mullet and, like, a, a terrible moustache breaks into, like, a cafeteria and just starts playing terribly the solo from, <laughs> from Careless Whisper. Right. And, like, ro- he's, like, lo- like rolling around on a table whilst playing it and being asked to leave. <laughs> and that's had 41 million views. <laughs> and this senior lecturer is, putting, is pointing to that as the reason the sax has become a joke. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Because, yeah, the, the life cycle of trends they'll yeah. get too big and then it'll become yeah like silly silly the butt of the jokes and then people will start liking it ironically again yeah. and then it'll become cool again it's so weird it's so the idea that any instrument is not cool or yeah or cool th- yeah it's so stupid do you like playing it it's cool then who fucking cares it's so weird yeah but I definitely stopped playing piano because I was like, well, when am I ever going to use this? And now I'm like, you stupid idiot. little oh my idiot. God. It's the most versatile instrument. I so w- good. I wish I learned an instrument properly and a language as a kid. Yeah. Any language. English, any language. Yeah. <laughs> properly. <laughs> yeah, that would be <laughs> Give nice. Give me a go. Get me back in there. I like it, Dave. Do you, do you notice how Dave pronounced Harold as Harold? Yes, I did, yes. I th- Have I talked to you about this before? I read a while ago that... Melbourne has slowly shifted in an accent where we switch out our vowels, like E's to A's. So we say stuff like Harold instead of Harold and helicopter instead of helicopter. Ah. As soon as you know you're doing it, you'll probably stop. But, yeah, I found that. I don't know why that is. But interesting. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. I think in that instance you is just misspoke, but no, I think it's that fun. Um. <laughs> Grim fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's not just 80s throwback songs. Adolf Sax's instrument, despite the many setbacks of his lifetime, can be heard across. She just said setbacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> setbacks of his lifetime can be heard across rock, pop, jazz, and electronic genres. And whilst there are lots of different types of saxophones, the instruments with the widest use and availability in modern time are the soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone saxophones, and there are now millions of players worldwide. Still, despite the instrument's undeniable influence and success, it doesn't have a chair in a conventional symphony orchestra, and it is rarely seen in such a setting. Really? There are definitely orchestral pieces that have been written with a saxophone in but it hasn't been widely adopted. It's because it's not no. more, like all the other ones sort of play together and are kind of boring. It feels like the saxophone would stand out too much. And, and uh, everyone would be staring at it everyone and then would, taking off their clothes. Yeah, everyone else <laughs> yeah. would feel. Oh, my God. You know, you, feel, you dress up all fancy to go see an yeah. orchestra. You don't want to then turn it into an orgy. You know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Over the top of Mozart. How does Careless Whisper sax go? <laughs> Beautiful stuff. That is sexy. <laughs> but I was yeah, surprised. That I'm like, oh, yeah, you don't see it in an orchestra. What, what about uh, Oliver Clark's song, uh, uh, Atomic Thrust? Oh, that's That's great. got a great sax solo in it. You recall that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't remember how it goes. Evan, Evan a stupid old Atomic Thrust film, coming at you. film clip for it, mm. and it's got a great... And then... Oliver plays the sax solo hanging out a car while still driving the car. Yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. He's a talented man. We'll have to post that from the to go on a But can he do it whilst riding a horse? Well, I'd have to assume so. <laughs> yeah. So, in summary, some people are still pushing for it to be part of orchestras because yeah. it is such a popular instrument. Uh, so there's still room to grow before sax's vision is fully realised, but that is the weird history of the saxophone. Dave. That was great. We really doubted you at the start there. I think I can speak for both of us there where we went, oh, Dave lost it. Oh, no. <laughs> fuck, it's um, going to be a real boring one. Oh, Dave's starting a new year and he's phoning it in. <laughs> yeah. um, but that was amazing. What a story. Yeah. Baffling in parts. So baffling. So baffling. I mean, baffling off the, the very first point that he even lived. Uh, that yes. is in itself baffling. But it, it is strange to think, like, I mean, minor changes, but history would definitely have changed if that kid had died. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Like, yeah, absolutely. Amazing. 
We yeah, wouldn't I mean, have Careless no, Whisper. Or it would be played with a flute. <laughs> Lame. Oh, my God. Skin flute. <laughs> eh? No. Sexy. No. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there and you I think go. It's funny for the, the bands that do have a saxophonist full time, like the E Street band, Bruce Springsteen's band, as that goes in and out of fashion. Like, I, I'm sure I remember footage of Clarence Clemens playing like a tambourine and stuff. <laughs> Must have been during the albums where. Hide the like, sax, hide the sax. Yeah. Bruce is like, want to sit this one out? Yeah. And I mean, this album. <laughs> Uh, can I play tambourine? All right, fine. Every song's got a tambourine solo. Yeah. Just make him feel <laughs> like he's a part of it. Yeah, he, he passed away a few years ago, and but he's been replaced in the band by his nephew, which is kind of cool. Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Cool. Yeah. That's really nice. So now his nephew's doing the tambourine solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Until next year when the sax is making another comeback. I think, yeah, you just got to ride it out sometimes. Yeah. Like, that's why I kept all my flare jeans. Yeah. They've got to come back eventually. I'll be back. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that brings us to everyone's favourite section of the show, uh, the fact, quote, or question section. Dave, I've got to say, great report. I love these reports we do that are a bit different to a, a classic sort of, what are you going to call the episode? What do you think? The weird history of the saxophone or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. Because yeah. I think if you just call it the saxophone, I'll get your reaction being yes. like, oh, do I want to listen to this? <laughs> the weird and wacky fantabulous <laughs> construction <laughs> of Horatio Hopnuckle. A mystery. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A murder mystery. Just add mystery to yeah, it. It'll be fine. Right. True crime, the saxophone story. <laughs> so anyway, this is the fact, quote, or question section, which I think has a jingle that goes something like this. Fact, quote, or question. <laughs> <laughs> He always remembers the hand. <laughs> Honorary saxophone edition. <laughs> no, I want it to be that forever. <laughs> oh, no. Clarence. <laughs> yeah, tribute to Clarence. <laughs> he didn't have to, yeah. The ding, he ha- actually had to play the ding quite a bit <laughs> yeah. in those non-saxy songs. But yeah. um, uh, So the way this works is if you support us at patreon.com slash dogoonpod or uh, via dogoonpod.com, uh, on the Sydney Scheinberg Deluxe Memorial Edition package level, you get to give us a fact quote or question amongst many other um, rewards. And there's heaps of different levels for any price budget. Uh, you can get bonus episodes. You can, you can have voting rights. Was Today was a free choice, I think, for you, Dave. Yeah, that's right. So I had to go through the, the hat and find some... Some suggestions. Some so the way or some we, brass. Oh, <laughs> so much. The way we work it with the voting is at any one time, two of the three of us will be um, putting it out to the votes, and then the other, the remaining one of the third <laughs> 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 will get to choose their own one. So on different levels, if you're on the Sydney Scheinberg level, you get to vote in two of the three uh, episodes. Anyway, um, but this part of the show is a fact, quote, or question. And uh, some of these Sydney Scheinberg level supporters have come up with some great stuff. I assume haven't read them yet. The first one is from Siraj Pires, who uh, did you drink, were me, recent... drink me under the table the other night. You're sharing a few beers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I just killed Jeff. <laughs> I want to die. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> she was being so such a good sport for a lot of the episode, but we wore her down. Yeah, enough is enough. With lameness in Come the on. end. Yeah, I'm the cool one here. That can't be right. Can't. What do you mean? But I'm so cool. Uh, I guess so. Thank you. The sax fan of the podcast. Uh, so Siraj uh, has given himself the title of Bum Wash Advocate, Cloaca yes. Division. Yes. you got to wash your butt. Got to wash that cloaca. Any ducks or chickens listening, wash them cloacas. Yep. Cloaca hygiene, very important. Siraj has given us a fact, and the fact is some turtles can breathe through their bum. <laughs> <laughs> Technically through the skin on or in their cloacas. A few other amphibians can do it too. That is... When you say some turtles can, is it like some species of breeds of turtles or is it just like Gary can but (laughs) Lewis can't? I'm assuming species, but maybe it is. Maybe it's one of those things. Maybe you're born with it. You're like, oh, you're an ass breather. (laughs) Okay. 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 More of a mouth guy myself. (laughs) 
<laughs> but hey, you know, whatever floats your boat, whatever keeps you oxygenated. <laughs> See you around. Did I tell you I got diagnosed as a mouth breather recently? No. Yeah, real bummer. What does um, that mean? Means that my nose isn't good enough for breathing. Okay. I'm down for surgery. Cool. So, did you not notice that you weren't breathing through your nose, or I didn't really, I didn't really know, notice, and I didn't know uh, that it causes causes issues. Is there a possibility that when they open up your nose, you'll lose that deep, deep voice, and you go, "Hello, hello, hello. it's me, Matt I Stewart. Bre- I, I, I Welcome down to Matt Stewart's world. I can breathe through my nose. It smells I'll, so good. I wake up from <laughs> surgery with a high pitched voice and a warehouse." <laughs> <laughs> it's a full warehouse. What did you, what, <laughs> doctor? What did you do to me? <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Lucky you're the cool one on the podcast. Yes, um, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Just That's me. So the next one. Thank you so much, Siraj, for that one. The next one comes from Claire Norris, who's given herself the title of cute animal cataloger. Oh, that's an important <laughs> job. Important role. And Claire has asked a question, uh, writing, Hi all, thanks for being such a bright spot in our very weird year. Hopefully Jess has her new puppy by the time this question airs. Sure do. Uh, Well, that's good, because the question is, what is the cutest thing your pet does? And I'm glad she's answered it. Because on Primates, uh, Evan and I... We encourage people, if they ask a question, answer, answer the question. Answer yeah. <laughs> so let's get your answer first, Jess, and then I'll read Claire's response. Um, <laughs> the cutest thing he does. <laughs> I don't know. Um, is if is any time anybody gets near him, he just rolls straight onto his back for tummy rubs, which is making training very hard because he will sit and then immediately lie on his back. He sits and rolls. Yeah, he sits and rolls. Um, and he has a chair that he's taken over as his. He's just very cute. Yeah. But he hasn't yet developed any, like, particularly cute habits because we've only had him, like, a month. But he's just cute in general. Does Humphrey have any cute habits? Uh, just letting him off the lead at the park. He just, he's just absolutely goes for it. Yeah. Says hello to every single dog individually. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. He's <laughs> a real nice dog. Yeah, he's a friendly, friendly, and yeah, and at home coming, becoming quite calm and quiet. Oh, that's we good. Had friends over last week, and they were like, "We didn't hear him the whole time. He's just so quiet." Because some dogs you hear them go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just like a, a silent mover. Yeah. Oh right, and he hasn't become depressed or something. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he's barely looked up from the couch. Yeah, yeah. No, he will still come over. You just be like, "Oh hi." Yeah, he's really Wonder friendly. Pat. Really that's friendly. Nice. nice dog. Uh, Claire answered by saying. My cats sit on my lap every day as I teach virtually. One takes the morning shift and the other the afternoon. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> they clock on. That's nice. Being like, well, your turn. Goose likes to spread his time with us uh, evenly. So he'll climb up on the couch and he'll lie on me for a little bit and then he'll go and lie on Aiden. So he's sort of like, I love you both. Oh, that's and we're like, nice. we don't care. Um, we know. <laughs> It's nice. That You're already nice. jaded. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we get it. We, we get, get it. You love us. You adore us. I get it. Whatever. Give did, me some space. I never asked. Did you name your dog after Retief Goosen? The, yes. The South African golfer. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nobody ever gets that Oh, reference. my God. That would be so... What, oh, where's your... Goose, that's an interesting name. Yes, he's named after Retief Goosen. <laughs> The South African golfer, but I'm sure you know who they are. That came up. That was a, I was uh, reading a, a quiz, newspaper trivia quiz the other day, and that was a question. Which golfer is was known as the goose? There you a- go. And I, I that couldn't makes sense. Qu- I'm, I'm like, Goosen, someone go. I couldn't quite remember. What a name, Retief Goosen. Incredible. Uh, thank you so much, Claire. Uh, this one comes from Drew Forsberg, whose title is D'Angelo's Untitled. <laughs> Does anyone get that reference? That feels like it's... What is it again? Say again. D'Angelo's Untitled. So is that the name of a famous artwork or something? Dave, what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Oh, uh, I'm including that there's a song by D'Angelo called Untitled. Okay. In brackets, How Does It Feel? Okay. From 2000. John oh, Mar- it's, it's, just, it's a play on Give Yourself a Title, I guess. 
Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Genre, contemporary soul. Oh, there'd be sax involved there, potentially. Big yeah, time. potentially. Opening Smooth line. Smooth sax. Uh, girl, it's only you, have it your way. And if you want, you can decide. And if you'll have me, I can provide everything that you desire. It's quite nice. That is quite nice. Uh, Drew's uh, given us a quote. And the quote is, fuck me sideways. Great quote. And that's from Cleaver Green in Rake. I haven't seen it in a while, but I love that show. Uh, he says, okay, I'm paraphrasing it, but whatever episode I first heard him say it in, I fell in love with the phrase. Just such an apt term for when circumstances rise to meet our own best efforts and tell us to stand aside, please. Okay. That's great. Beautiful. Is that? I wonder, is Drew not from Australia? Because surely you've heard the phrase, fuck me sideways yeah. before Rake was on TV. If not, I'm disappointed. <laughs> Um, double checking. Where are you from, Drew? Oh, he is from America. Oh, okay. That's cool. So, um, Rake's been watched in America. That's cool. That is cool. Mm. Uh, getting a bit of Australian culture there, Drew. Uh, thank you so much for that quote. Fuck me sideways. (laughs) Beautiful. That's a beautiful quote. Uh, and finally from Vincenzo or Vinny Giovanni Bonadonna. Oh, amazing. Incredible Every time name. it uh, really just it tickles tickles me inside the brain. <laughs> you know, that sweet, tickly feeling. And Vinny's given himself the title of the Greyhound. And his Ooh, that's quote. A good title. That's cool. <laughs> his quote is, the most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. And that's from Amelia Earhart. 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 A uh, nice quote by a cool person, in my opinion. <laughs> Thanks, Vinny, for clarifying. I uh, hope you do go on as have a happy holiday season and thank you for the great content. Keep it up. Um, I think, well, I think we all had a pretty good holiday season. Thank you so much, Vinny. Thank I, you. I will speak for the others. How dare you. <laughs> <laughs> and we also like to thank a few other supporters of ours uh, who've been on the signed up on the... Maybe the DB Cooper level. Ask prod. The Ask prod level. And uh, Jess normally comes up with a little game to play, something based on the episode. We can either name a new instrument after them or... After their surname, like the saxophone. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that could be good. Or we are the high school band teachers and we are assigning them instruments. Oh, okay. Maybe we can assign them an instrument that's invented for them. Great. Perfect. All right, well, if I can kick us off. And if you could do it as uh, Largo from The Simpsons. Uh, <laughs> Please. Please, the Simpsons. <laughs> okay, I'm in character. Oh, my God. It's I'm ready. just perfect. Oh, my God. <laughs> from Calcott in England, I'd love to thank Jonty Hyde. Oh. Oh, the Hyde Whacker. The Hyde Whacker. That's for you, Jonty. Percussion. Hyde Whacker, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> it's like a few sticks you find outside and a rock. <laughs> That actually sounds like, like a, like a nickname for drums or something, you know? The yeah, hide, because hide it's whacker. yeah, it's like, isn't it like a rawhide or something? No, <laughs> raw. What I don't know what that even means. It's like pigskin. We mm, used to be. Why they call it skins? Be, yeah. yeah. Jonty hide. Jonty hide on the hide whacker. I love Jonty that. hide on the hide whacker. Thank you that. so much for your support, Jonty. I'd also love to thank from Dublin in Ireland, Adam O'Reilly. Uh, Adam O'Reilly's playing the O'Reilly pipes. Oh, oh, that's that sounds nice. Yeah. Are they what are they? A big pipe? Are they a bagged pipe? It's one big pipe. One big pipe. Wow. PVC pipe. It's stuck together. So that's why the pipes. Oh, okay. Um, how long is it? Uh, fourteen meters. Wow. wow. That is that's huge. cumbersome. Yeah. And it's just it's not t- like twirled up like a French horn or something. It's straight. Yeah. It's straight, but then just at the end, it does a little loop, like the the water slide at Action Park. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the sound cannot make it around it. Oh, yeah. the sound. <laughs> but it's right. It gives it a lovely, like, <laughs> sound at the end Distinct of the note. I love it's it. It's really, it's really beautiful. It's, it's, and the O'Reilly pipes, that sounds like an Irish instrument, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. The O'Reilly pipes. So uh, it is. It great is work. an Irish instrument. So. And uh, last one from me, I'd love to thank from Great Holm in England. Matt Stone. What about the Stone Clef? Stone Clef. Now explain that to me. What's that? 
What do you got there with a stone? This is a mu- musical thing, like a treble clef, yeah. bass clef. So, so what's a stone clef? Oh, what is a stone clef? Yes. Well, okay. Um, so you have a stack of yep. stones. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All different sizes. Yes. And Stacked on top of each on other. On top of each other. Yep. And then at a dramatic moment in the orchestral piece, <laughs> yes. Matt will run up and yep. push them over. Oh, oh that's great. Um, like a crashing. Yeah, there'll be crashing. Uh, a, there, crash, a crashendo. There'll be a crashendo, thank you. Uh, some of the strings players are I think at I'm risk. I'm the cool one again. <laughs> you, felt, you felt regret for me, Dan. <laughs> I saw it. Uh, some of the other players, the string players, are at risk of being hit by stones. It's worth it. But absolutely worth it for the dramatic crash sound, endo. crashendo, and also it's just visual. You know, people yeah. might be nodding off. It's a bit where you're like... Or, so you know, some of the rocks will hit those people. Yeah, that's right. But just to keep, them, keep everyone interested on your toes. Yeah, yeah. So they're crashing onto just the floor or are there symbols, assorted things sort of on the ground for them to crash into? Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's amazing. I love that very much. Great instrument. Cheers, Matt Stone. Uh, do you want to have a go here, Bo- Bopla? <laughs> the yes. big Bopla. Yes, I would love to thank some people and I would love to thank from Boromhun, Boromham Wood. Boromwood. Love it. Boromwood. You know these are English place names are never pronounced like you think they I know. should be. They're not they don't spell so it's things not phonetically. Boreham Wood. It's probably Boromwood. Yeah. yeah, I reckon Boromwood sounds good. Yeah, it does yeah. sound pretty good. And I would love to thank uh Delali Amafu Day. Oh, great Amafu Day. D A D, Dad. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to thank Daddy. <laughs> Is that the instrument? Daddy? Oh, the daddy. The big daddy. Oh, the, big the big daddy. daddy. The big daddy. The Lali, you're on the big daddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, of course, is the biggest drum ever invented. Wow. You have to climb up uh, a full double-story ladder to sit at it. Yep. And Because that's how tall it is. Yes. And you have, like, a big high chair. It's sort of like a, a tennis umpire's chair, you know, just or, yeah, yeah, or like yeah. a lifeguard chair. Yep. And uh, you sit on that with two massive sticks and you play it. Um, that sort of bum 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 that timpani sort of I thing, but it. it's bigger. Yeah, it's like a big timpani. Wow! Not the industry big timpani. Don't get confused with them because they are one of the big pressure groups in <laughs> uh, instruments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. But yeah, the what do we, what do we call it again? The big daddy. Big daddy. Big daddy. Can so it, it, pl- it really for those big dramatic moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When like a pile of stones isn't enough. isn't enough. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't want a crash endo. You need the big daddy. Get in the big daddy. So thank you so much. I'd also love to thank from London, in London, Caleb. Ooh. Caleb, no surname. So it's got to be on Caleb then, or London. The London Eye. Well, in the middle. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> like, well, is he playing the like the cables that hold the get together the London Eye like a giant harp? Exactly right. Yes. Amazing. Caleb is in fact a giant. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that's so that's why because everyone in London knows Caleb. You don't need a surname when everyone knows you. It's oh, Caleb. It's giant like a Caleb. It's yeah. like Adele. No one knows the surname. No one knows the surname Adkins. No, no one, one knows. knows it. No one knows what her surname no is. Heard it's not Adkins. We don't know. We don't know. I could don't know any, what it could is. Could be anything. It's I'm Adele. Um, I'm Caleb. Yeah, exactly. Everyone knows Caleb. So he plays the London Eye like a big harp. And it is honestly, oh, my God, it is transfixing. Wow. Wow. Is it haunting? It is haunting. Up and down the Thames. And it it plays in the middle of the night and you think, oh. Oh. And it puts puts all of London to sleep. puts the the queen to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, queen. (laughs) No, no. She can't sleep without the London Eye. (laughs) (laughs) And I would love to thank, finally, for me, from North Hobart in Tasmania, Ryan North. Ryan North from North Hobart. North right. Hobart, lovely spot. No-ho. Uh, oh, what, is that a no-ho? That sounds like an instrument. A no-ho. It's, like, it's a brother of the oboe. Yes. What is a no-ho? No-ho. So does that, is that a woodwind or is that a brass? Yes, it's a woodwind. Woodwind. The oboe, it's, yeah. So it's like, it's like an oboe, but it's, um, get this, bigger. What? <laughs> Yeah. That's not like us. Yeah, yeah. And it's not, it's not made of brass. It is, it's woodwind and it is like this one, just to make it easier for everyone, it's made out of wood as well. Oh, okay, cool. Not just the reed, all of it's wood. So what part of it is wind? Ah, uh, the blowing. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Uh-huh. Well, there we go. Dave, do you want to bring it home and thank some people? Thank you so much. I would like to thank from Portsmouth in England here, Tom Ford. Tom, Tom Ford. Ford. The, uh, the... 
makeup and fragrance and uh, film director and film director and clothing. Yes. Okay. And, and uh, wow, Tom Ford. Tom Ford, to you've us. got That's enough. Cool. So. Um, I don't know who that person is you're talking about. I went to Ford, uh, the car manufacturer. Yes, okay, great. Sure. So I was thinking he plays the exhaust pipe. Oh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like with his mouth or is he still revving it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's revving the exhaust pipe. Is he like trying, trying to like get backfires in time with the music? Yes. I in, Initially I was thinking he took the exhaust pipe off and played it sort of like a... With a couple of sticks. Ding, 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 oh, okay. Ding, ding, but yeah. I like this even more. Him Still just revving it in ca- time. So he's just sort of... <laughs> <laughs> he backs the car up onto the stage. <laughs> and it's a, it's, a, it's a V8, so it sounds yeah. great. Oh, yeah, it sounds it's awesome. got a beautiful timber. Oh, fantastic. Well, only Tom Ford, we appreciate your uh, contribution to music. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! <laughs> <laughs> I would now like to thank uh, from Shoreham by Sea in West Sussex. Fantastic uh, place name. Samuel Smith. Samuel, Samuel Smith. Smith. <laughs> Playing uh, the Smith and Western. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Oh, I love it. We've got a lot of percussionists, so I'm really enjoying that. Yeah, I love percussion. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Samuel Smith and Wesson on stage. You know, like a song a song that starts out with, with drums. Yeah. Like a, that's, I think that's my ideal. Like I'm building voice. a song. Like my voice, yes. <laughs> it starts with drums. <laughs> Whenever I talk, it starts with drums. I build, I build it from there. <laughs> so thank you, Samuel Smith. And finally, I'd like to thank from Cullingworth in Bradford, also in England, Jack Marcham. Marcham, oh, Marcham. I mean, marching drums. What, what about Only <laughs> bigger? <laughs> what about the one-man marching band? Yes. Oh yeah, the Marcham. The yeah. Marcham. You're on the Marcham. It's the one man. He's playing them all. Yeah. yeah. So he's got, yeah. I love the symbols between the knees. <laughs> yeah. So crash, it's like crash. the one man band thing. What <laughs> sets it apart from that? He, is, is it bigger? <laughs> yes. And it includes backflips. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, you springs on his sh- shoes to help you know, with backflips. Sometimes you'll have like cheerleaders at the front of a marching band, like twirling sticks and stuff. Yeah. He's doing that as well. Whoa. Whoa. That is. That is badass. He's busy. That is bad, badass. Uh, so thank you to all those supporters, uh, Jonty, Adam, Matt, Delali, Caleb, Ryan, Tom, Samuel, and Jack. And we also, finally, before we finish off today, uh, we also like to welcome in a couple of people into the Triptych Trip Club. Triptych Club. Uh, and the way this works is you, you get involved at the patreon.com slash do go on pod. And if you're on the shout-out level for three straight years, then you get welcomed into the club. Uh, and there's a few people who come in today. We've got to do this pretty quickly as someone's about to need the studio. But, uh, <laughs> Jess, you've got a, a something for our new inductees, a bit of food and drink. Yes, we have Belgian chockey. Oh, I love it. And uh, we were talking a lot, uh, maybe too much, about milk before. So milky cocktails, oh, yeah. you know. White Russian. White Russian, et cetera. Uh, Dave, you've got a band book? Oh, uh, we've got uh, John Coltrane and Thelonious Monk. Oh. Wow. Going sax to sax. Yes. I love that. Uh, S to S, great band, <laughs> which is, of course, Thelonious. My sister, and sister. John Coltrane. Uh, so there's a few in today. Oh, <laughs> said the only one. Thelonious Monk was a piano player. <laughs> Sorry, the only one jazz musician <laughs> that, that doesn't play saxophone. But still, imagine yeah. John Coltrane right on sax, Thelonious Monk on oh, piano. That is yeah. amazing. And the way this works is I'm standing at the door. I'm welcoming in the inductee. Uh, then Dave hypes them up. He's the hype man. And then Jess uh, hypes up Dave's hype work. <laughs> okay, so let's run through these. You ready, Dave? You ready right, to hype sorry, them up? Mind, Zane, put your mind. Here we go. <clears throat> How many have we got? How many have we got? Oh. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, here we go. Here Top we five. This. Here we go. Woo! All right. Woo! 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 Lifting the velvet rope. And if your name's on this list, welcome in. Grab yourself a white Russian. And, uh, yeah, this is the first week in quite a while where Dave's booked a good band. So <laughs> enjoy the tunes. Enjoy it. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, firstly, from Straffen in Kildare Island, it is... Ronan O'Neill. I'd kill to have this guy in. Kill to have. All right. Yes. yes. Woo! 
Hi. I'd also love to welcome in from South Yarra in Victoria, Australia, it's Sarah Young. Oh, the night is young because you are here tonight. Yes. From Bloomington, Indiana, in America, it's Jacob Alden Miller. Oh, Bloomington, hell. <laughs> We've got a great guest list tonight. It's all filler, no Miller. Yeah, all right, fantastic. <laughs> From University Place in Washington, the United States, it's Emily Knutson. Ooh, don't get <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> don't get your Knutsons in a yeah, twist. Yeah, I was going to say don't get your Knutsons in a twist, but I was like, is that weird? Don't get your Knutsons yes. in a twist because this night is going to be great. Don't do it. And finally, from Phoenix, Arizona in the United States, it's Victoria Kodak. Oh, rising from the ashes like a phoenix, Victoria <laughs> Kodak. Yes. We did it. Oh, welcome one and all uh, into the club. Victoria, Emily, Jacob, Sarah and Ronan. Um, well, that's all we need to do this week. Thanks so much for joining us, Dave. Boot this baby home. Well, if you want to get in contact at any time, all the links to our social medias and emails and our Patreon are at dogoonpod.com. Check it out. But until next week, we'll say thank you so, so much for listening. But until then, it's goodbye. Later. Bye. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.